here from Miami, the beautiful and uh, oh so sophisticated Miami Volvo Ocean Race Village. Um, my name is Mr. Clean uh, for the Sailing Anarchy Report. Um, I, it's a nice treat because seven months ago in Alicante, I got a chance to meet with this guy, performance analyst Robert Hopkins from Puma Ocean Racing, about his uh, uh, this 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 new whiz bang gizmo for the first time that was able to measure leeway, which has sort of been the holy grail, something that's nearly impossible to measure other than looking at the at the wake of your boat and trying to measure that, which just isn't that precise. And now I have the treat of having the inventor or the the uh, What's your, what's your role? I'm an uh, application engineer. Application engineer with, uh, with Nortech, the guys that created and built this cool, uh, this cool gadget, which we call a sonar Doppler something or other. What do you call it? Doppler velocity log. Doppler velocity log. And, and um, we learned how it functions. I don't, we don't need to go back over that. But I think, Robert, the, the big question I have at this point in the race is um, how useful has it been? How have the boys been using it? Has it been contributing to their great success recently? Uh, what do you think? It's been great. It's worked. First of all, it's worked, and it hasn't broken, which is huge for, for this uh, race. Because everything breaks, right? <laughs> well, most things break, and this hasn't so far, so we're really happy with that. And it's accurate, gives us numbers that the guys use all the time. And sometimes we'll meet a new guy from Nortech, and they'll say, well, give me an example where it really was important. I'd say, well, you know, it's always important. There's not a single decision we make that doesn't involve knowing how fast we're going, what the leeway is, or what the current is, or you name it. So it's always, always on the top of our mind. Does Kenny and the boys really feel like it's um, giving them a leg up? Because nobody else obviously can have one. Yeah. So then the next question they have is, well, how come you aren't winning already? You know, <laughs> if it's so good. And of course, it's not Nortec's fault that we're not leading the race. It's a, there's a lot you have to do right to win the Volvo, but we're improving. And I think that's uh, partly due to Nortec, because we've been honest with ourselves and um, been correcting uh, problems in, our, in our, the range of our performance here and there and just chipping away at it. And now I think we're at parity with, with anybody in the fleet in any condition. And that, so we get the most improved award for performance. Well, that, I mean, that's for sure, certainly over, over leg one. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about how exactly they use it. If you can get your leeway exactly right with your boards and, and your cant and everything else, and you get a 0.001% advantage, and I don't know what it is, maybe it's 1%, but even if it's 0.001% times 40,000 miles, yeah, you, you, that's, that's a lot of bow lays, right? Yeah, well, 1% of 20 knots is two tenths of a knot. That's 20 feet a minute. That's a, what, a third of a boat length a minute. You know, when we watch these uh, tracking things, they're moving less than that against each other. So although they're going very fast, they're incredibly even, these boats. They're more even than a fleet of Solings. So that small advantage is a big deal. Yeah, and let's, let's talk a little bit about the practical stuff, which is why we have Torstein here. Um, uh, we had a little sort of pre-chat about it, but, you know, obviously there are... I'm, I'm guessing after you guys put out your press release and after Roberts uh, uh, became a movie star on YouTube, uh, you got a lot of calls. Is that, would that be safe to say? I got a few emails, that's for sure, from yeah. America's Cup programs and some of the uh, other teams. People with a lot of money to spend and, and uh, the absolute need to be, be precise, right? That's true, yeah. But it wasn't so much, you know, all the guys selling melges or whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of overkill for a melges. Perhaps. Are you a sailor? Yes, I am. You got, I mean, you guys are mostly sailors, I guess, at Nortec. Yeah, I'd say the, the owner of the company is and some of the colleagues are as well. Right. And um, so, so production-wise, uh, uh, I, I understand your non-compete or whatever it is runs out with Puma at the end of the race. So then you could make it available. Is that going to happen? And if not, what are the barriers to getting it to market? I would think one of the barriers is right now is trying to find an installation. As you notice, is when we installed it in the first round, we tried to put it on the hull of the boat, and that really wasn't working so well. So we moved it down to the bottom of the keel because of the turbulence up up with all the all the appendages and everything else. Bubbles. Bubbles. Appendages. Yeah. These are the problems. High speeds are becoming a problem. So what we really need to do is we have to really evaluate the design and try to find a solution that where we can get it up on the hull. When you can get it on the hull, then your market really starts to open up and we can start finding solutions. We'd also like to probably drive down the cost a little bit so it's, you know, it opens up the market and get more boats involved into it. Sure, because, I mean, you know, if it's even $10,000, you're, you're, you're down to a few hundred boats, really. And then if it's $100,000, you're down to a dozen, you know. And that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're looking at right now. So wh I mean, what is the possible solution to the bubble problem? Is it is it the way the aperture is? Is it uh, a, ho a different kind of housing? Do you know yet? No, maybe it has to do with placement. Maybe it's a frequency we transmit on. There's a couple of things that we're looking at right now. And there's different transmitting schemes that you can look at as well. 
So. What about the actual performance of the unit? Are there changes that you need to make in that, or, or, or are you guys happy with all the data that you've seen? I'm extremely pleased. I'm actually surprised how solid it has been throughout the whole. It's been pinging away nonstop, and I haven't seen any glitches. And I've been actually surprised it hasn't been any, you know, periods of time where it's been, sh you know, showstoppers for us. They d I don't think we had any times where they actually had to pull it out and put in the, the paddle wheel again and go back 100 years. Have you, need to, um, uh, have you needed to adjust the, the, the wavelengths that it's transmitting on for the bits and pieces it's finding from stop to stop or anything like that? I think one of the problems that we had is that we weren't anticipating the velocity ranges uh, so much. So uh, the boats were actually going faster. And what we happens when you go too fast is that you wrap around and you go into negative velocities. So what we have done is we made some uh, fine adjustments for that. So we actually here uh, this week to uh, do a firmer upgrade and so now that they'll get the full velocity range so they can sail up to 50 knots which we expect from them. That would be a little frightening I think. <laughs> Robert what about you guys were there any are there any sort of performance things that you were able to see besides that 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 that, that could be improved or, or that uh, could make it even more useful to you? Uh, no I mean what for our it's not a product but as a project for us it's just perfect what it does is exactly what we need it's not a product for a Pearson 35 but as a project to use on any elite campaign it's it's ready it's just so good it, it works and it gives you less problems than a paddle wheel frankly wow. okay. couldn't couldn't get a better endorsement I think than that um, you know you guys had a uh, a couple of panel discussions that I unfortunately missed one was with the University of Miami oceanographic Ros Rosenthal ocean Mar Mar Rosenthal marine and atmospheric studies center and uh, I don't know what the other one was but what was the what was that whole uh, thing about and what sort of uh, uh, things did you discuss there I think it was really mostly focused on the models and how they use the models. What I introduced was how we're actually measuring these these uh, currents in real time, and how you can compare it to the models and adjust to how your you know your course and what your plan is, your strategy. I think it was really more focused on Robert and how they're using the models. Okay, so so Alan, yeah, uh, when he says models. He's talking about current models. He's not talking about the ones that I saw at Tootsie's last night. Right. Now, models of the current. Okay. You understand where my brain is. That's good. I like that. We get to know each other a little bit now. So they, they forecast the current, and we need to know that, like the Gulf Stream forecast. And we validate that forecast, and we're sailing along. Um, I could show them a breadcrumb trail of the velocity vectors of the current everywhere, and you can see where, where the forecast is right and wrong. You know, you guys build these, these sensors for government and for universities and for uh, uh, to study current and wave action all over the world, I assume. Um, but I think this has to be the first time that anyone has ever sailed across around the whole world measuring the current the whole way. Because, because if you do the calculations, you can actually measure the current perfectly, right? That's absolutely true. Okay. This is the first time that I know about it as well. So, so what scientifically might come of this data and future events data? I mean, it seems like there's an opportunity here to do some fabulous things for science and for shipping and for all these other 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 uh, uh, endeavors yeah I agree completely with that but the problem is is that you know we shouldn't depend on ocean races to, to, to collect our data for developing models and such but maybe it can be used in the sense of you know shipping and that's what I'd like to see uh, come out of this you know further out in the future I, I mean realistically you know, if you if you, you got it working at, at 50 knots, it'll work at the 22 knots that most boats cruise around the world at. I would guess that these big shipping companies and Berg Propulsion and all these guys will see that that they could buy this thing and and I would guess save a lot of money on fuel. Is that right? Precisely correct. That's what I think as well. So this but it takes time for this, you know, technology to be accepted by these type of communities. Sailing's a little bit different because these guys are focused on winning. And they need anything they can get that might give them an advantage. Absolutely, yeah. But I, I swear, I mean, in, in these days of expensive fuel, this, this little vanity project here could turn into be a really huge commercial thing, couldn't it? It could be. We hope for I don't know. Anything else you want to add? Uh, what, what, what's, what's been your experience having, being a now a YouTube star? A lot of people come up to you and talk to you about this? Yeah, it's been exciting to you know be seen with you on the same frame. <laughs> I, I just haven't been able to live it down. <laughs> I, bet. I bet. Well, guys, check them out at Nortech.com. Zoom in on this right here. Is it not Nortech.com? What is it? Um, Nortech-no. Nortech Norwegian company. No. That's a great website, guys. Nice job. Nortech- da What? NortechUSA.com. Check them out. Uh, and of course, Puma Ocean Racing. Thanks always to you guys. You treat, treat us really well, and it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Great Thank job. You. Thank you, mate.
wrong. 